Hi everybody, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week what I thought I'd do is talk a little bit about Apple's upcoming operating system, uh, Mavericks, with all of the talk about the possibility of Mavericks being released uh, sometime next week, or at least uh, talked about uh, on October 22nd. I thought what I would do is talk a little bit about what you need to do uh, to prepare your Mac for that upgrade. Uh, I know a lot of times people have questions about, well, what do I need to do to upgrade? What things do I need to have in place? Can my system be upgraded? Uh, things like that. So I thought I'd walk you through uh, a process of things that you can check and things that you can do even now as you are preparing for Apple's next release. So you can see here over on uh, Apple's uh, store, you can see uh, on their website, you can see that Mavericks is coming. Nice wave there. Uh, there's a couple of things that you need to check um, before you upgrade. The first thing is you need to check to see if your computer is even eligible uh, for the upgrade. If you've got an older Mac, uh, especially uh, beyond five years old or so, uh, you may not even be eligible for the upgrade at all. Uh, pretty much from what I've read, uh, the upgrades are available to anyone who can run Mountain Lion. Uh, but just to be safe, I pulled up this uh, article here, uh, which is pretty consistent with what I've seen. Uh, and this is a list of the uh, compatible models. Uh, you can see iMacs from mid-2007 or newer, uh, MacBooks uh, from these different terms. So you want to look and see uh, whether your machine falls into this. Uh, also, you need to make sure that your machine has at least 2 gigabytes of memory and 8 gigabytes of available uh, hard disk space. Uh, those are a couple of things that you need to have uh, on your machine. So uh, you see that and you wonder, okay, so how do I check that out? Well, you can do that by going up to the Apple menu up here and clicking About This Mac. And that'll bring up this little window here which will give you uh, information on, uh, on your computer. And so what you do is click the More Info button right here. You can see memory right away right here. And so if you've got at least the 2 gigabytes of memory, you should be good. Uh, I would generally recommend going to 4 if you can do it because uh, 2 nowadays is a little bit uh, underpowered. But uh, if you've got that, at least you know you're eligible. So click More Info here and it takes you into the About This Mac screen. And right here you can see uh, what your computer is. It gives you all the information right here that you can compare against this chart here. So you can see I've got a Mac Mini mid-2011. It says er, uh, early 2009 or newer is eligible. So that would mean that my computer is eligible for this update. So that's one of the things that you want to check. Now, the other thing you want to check is you want to check uh, the different software that you've got on your computer because you want to know whether your software is compatible or not. And there's a couple of ways that you can do that. Uh, the first way would be to uh, check out the system report. And so you can click the system report button. And you want to go down on the side to applications. And this will show you whatever software applications that you have installed. And now I just want to, uh, let me just put this down and this down for a second. Uh, what I want to do though is show you, if you come over here on the side, you can see the kind of software that it is. And so I'm going to sort by software kind. And if you scroll down, you can see a Classic, Intel, and you want to keep going down here, because all of these are fine, uh, and see if you see any PowerPC type of software. Now, most of that is gone, um, but as you can see, there's a few stragglers here uh, that I had on my system. Those are things that won't run on uh, Mavericks. They didn't run on Mountain Lion either, um, but for some of you who may be making the leap uh, you know, from a different operating system up to uh, Mavericks, that just kind of gives you an idea of how to check your software uh, to see what's there and, uh, and give you information on that. Let me put that down for a second. Now, the other way that you can check uh, software is uh, by going to a website called RoaringApps.com. And this is a great site for checking compatibility. Uh, they do their own checks uh, with the betas and things like that. And so you can see here they've got a compatibility table ready for Mavericks, ready to go. So click that. And they have a, uh, the ability to you continue in basic mode or enable real, uh, real time, uh, which downloads a file and, and that information. I'm just going to go to continue in basic for the sake of this tutorial and let this load. And so what it does is it creates a uh, website here where you can check uh, your various applications to see if they're Mavericks ready. And it'll have a green check mark here that says they verified it and they know that it's ready. Now, right now, because it's kind of early, uh, you'll see there's a lot that haven't been verified. Uh, there's some blanks in here. Uh, but this is the place to check it out. Uh, hopefully by the time 
uh, Mavericks does come out. More tests will be made, and they'll be able to show you these things. Uh, you can also um, search them by alphabetical, you know, by the different type of application you're looking for to see if it will work. So what I would do is especially check out applications that are really important to you and come back to the site and make sure that they have the green check mark that they're ready for Mavericks so that you know you'll be able to use those on your system. All right, so those are a few things that you need to check. So let me put that down. So once you've checked your hardware, you've checked the software piece, you know that all of that is fine. Uh, one more thing you might want to check, and you can do that by going into Disk Utility. Uh, and in, uh, this, in the Disk Utility, what you probably want to do is give a check of your uh, main hard drive just to see if there's any issues with permissions. So you would click on your drive like this. You'd go to uh, First Aid and you can verify disk permissions. Now, this is uh, mainly important if you're noticing your computer slowing down or things like that. You don't want to migrate those problems over when you do your upgrade. So you could click this uh, verify disk permissions to make sure everything's fine with that. Uh, and also you want to verify your disk. So let me just, uh, let's do verify disk first. Let's make sure that my hard disk is okay. And it says basically it might be slow uh, or unresponsive while it's being verified. And so uh, they'll have a progress in indicator and all of that. So we're going to say verify disk. And so now it's going to start checking my file system and it's going through uh, that process. So what I'm going to do is let this run and then when it's done I'll come back and show you what it looks like on the other side once it's finished doing the verification. Okay, so here we are back on uh, Disk Utility. You can see it says that this volume, my, my main drive here, appears to be okay. And that's what you're looking for. Uh, if for some reason you have some errors or some things that need to be repaired, uh, you can repair uh, permissions. Uh, this is a little more than I can go into here. You can look at the help uh, up at the top here uh, to walk you through that, but uh, that'll at least let you know if everything's okay with that. Uh, you also might want to verify disk permissions. That's something else that you can do as well, and it'll make sure that everything is, is fine with your permissions on your folders and files and, and all of that. So that's one of the things that you want to do just to make sure that everything is in order and set to go. So let me put this down here. Let's pop this down. Uh, the next thing you're going to want to do is to make a backup. Uh, you want to make sure that you've got your uh, computer backed up. And one of the things I recommend doing is a bootable clone of your drive. And so the software that I uh, prefer to use for that is called SuperDuper. Uh, SuperDuper, uh, you can use it in a free version, which will make a clone for uh, your drive. So basically what a clone is, is it's going to make a bootable backup onto an external drive. And what that means is you can take that drive, plug it into any Mac, hold down the Option key uh, when it starts up fresh, and then you can choose that drive and actually boot your computer from that uh, external hard drive. And so what I would recommend is getting an external hard drive and setting up a bootable copy. That way if anything goes wrong with your upgrade, you can just uh, restore it from that bootable backup and it puts your computer back just like it was before. So this is super duper right here and basically in concept it just works that you come up here and select uh, the drive that you want to copy. And so in this case uh, the server HD, that's my main hard drive, and where you want to copy it to. And so I've got this uh, server boot uh, backup hard drive uh, right here that I've got ready for uh, backing up. Now one of the things that you'll want to do when you, uh, when you set this up, you know, once this drive uh, gets going and has information on it, is uh, what I found all the time is that Spotlight wants to start indexing this backup. And since I've already got uh, an index of my main hard drive, I don't need an, an index of this exact copy. So what you want to do is go into uh, System Preferences and go into Spotlight and come over here. And then you want to add your drive on this privacy setting right here so that it won't index it. Otherwise, you'll wonder why, you're, why that drive's spinning up so much and why your computer's slow. It's because it's indexing that drive. So put it in here, and then you don't have to worry about Spotlight indexing it, and it won't slow down your computer. So let me pop that down. So once you've selected these things here, uh, you have other options within SuperDuper. Uh, what you want to do uh, from this dropdown is you probably want to select this Smart Update, and it tells you what it's going to do. It's going to Smart Update the server, server Backup hard drive, this one up here, from this one. So in other words, it's going to put this one on this one, and that's what you want. And the Smart uh, Update, basically what it does is once it does its initial backup, then the next time it backs up, it will only back up 
uh, what it ha what has changed. It won't start all over again. Okay, so that's the one that you want to do now. Uh, SuperDuper is a great software package. If you pay, I think it's $26 or something like that, $27 for it. Uh, what you can do is you can schedule your backups. Let me just click OK here. Uh, what you can do is actually schedule your backups uh, where you choose when you want it to back up. You can back it up uh, every uh, first, second, third, fourth week on certain days. Uh, you can say what time you want it to start copying so that it can start backing up uh, when you go to bed. It can do it at night, you know, that kind of thing. Or you can even just check this box and say you want it to back up when uh, the drive is connected to your Mac. So that when you turn the drive on and it connects to your Mac, SuperDuper will automatically launch, do the backup, and then close itself down. Uh, so it's a great program. Now, it also gives you in plain language what it's going to do based on whatever you change in these settings. So you can see here it says every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. If I add Sunday, Sunday gets added to the list. And it tells you exactly what it's going to do so that you know once you start it what it's going to do. You're not wondering if you're overriding something or doing something that's not right. Let me just click Cancel here. So I've already got one scheduled here. Uh, I've got my Smart Update right here that I had already set up. Uh, so I can just click, say Copy Now. And what it's going to do is it's going to um, schedule it. You can see it says the automatic. Uh, it's automatically going to run in so many seconds here. Once it does its countdown, uh, you'll see what it looks like when it starts backing up. And there it goes. So it's preparing the copies and everything, and then it starts copying the files. And since I had this on a smart update, I've already updated it once, so it's going to go through and evaluate uh, things and see what it needs to copy over. Once it's done with the process, you'll have green uh, all the way across here. That'll let you know that everything's in good shape and you're set and ready to go. So that's, uh, that's how you get set and ready for the Mavericks update. That just gives you some things that you can begin to prepare now so that when Apple does release Mavericks, you're ready for the update. Uh, with those backups and everything in play, uh, that way you know that if something goes wrong, you can always get back to where you started. So once Mavericks comes out, I will walk you through the process of up upgrading to it and show you what that looks like from start to finish. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac.